Well, we've got to start somewhere. We'll start yeah. there. Okay. We'll start. The next challenge will test each racer's ability to quickly change direction. I'm not sure I'll make it through that. Edge your on a bit, Bishop. Edge your on a bit. Yeah, that's going to be tight enough, isn't it? Handbrake. Yeah, I should be about right. Guy and David are going to slalom and have been asked to lay out a precise course. That's summer's like in him. Far from straight. It'll be right, though. It'll be right. Don't worry about it. Are we going left, right, or right, left? Well, however, it takes your fancy. OK. Across the line, that's Across it. Across the line, that's it. An F1 car's high level of grip means it can change direction in the blink of an eye without having to lose speed. One of the stiffest tests is the famous Eau Rouge corner at Spa, where the bravest drivers tackle a quick left-right at 180 miles per hour to carry momentum up the hill. Making a bike change direction also requires extreme physical input from the rider to overcome the gyroscopic effects of the wheels. When they're turning at speed, their tendency is to stay straight. Nevertheless, David thinks Guy's got this one in the bag. Yeah, you can probably just be dancing on the pegs, like that. Just like that. Whereas I'll need to be going... Come on, bro. The slalom race is back on the hangar straight. They must negotiate nine cones in just 150 metres. David will go first, while Guy waits at the finish line. You're right. That's it, that's me starting out. Ready to time the run of his new best friend. If he invited me to Monaco, would I go? I'd love to. <laughs> Just me knock on the door. All right, Dave, how's it going, mate? You all right? What's happening? <laughs> Here he comes. Here he comes. Listen. <laughs> I knew it was going to be tricky because, you know, it's a bit tight for a racing car. Yes. But it, we put new tyres on, yeah. which gave a lot more front grip, so it was a lot more nimble than I expected. I really thought that I kind of got the right momentum. The art is to apply just the right amount of throttle to spin the rear tyres, pivoting the car around the grippy front end. Total throttle travel is maybe only well, less than 50 millimetres and you learn to be able to, while the car's moving around, just put in very small movements with your foot when you're at low speed. But I was literally just maybe giving it, say, just under half throttle to get the car moving. The most impressive thing for me was when he got through the final cone and he gave it the berries to go through the finish line. <laughs> How tricked did that look? I felt the exhaust pulses on my chest, <laughs> just the earth move, genuinely. Obviously, it didn't. It didn't, but Jesus. Guy has 12.87 seconds to beat and heads for the start line. I'm surprised he didn't have a little sneaky practice on the way down, because we didn't see he couldn't practice. But that is very sporting of him. He's, he's, a, he's a gentleman. Three, two, one. crosses the line in 9.87 seconds. I don't think that was a very good test. Three seconds quicker than David. Oh, 
right there. How do we get on? Nine and a half seconds. Ah, smoked you. I'm amazed at how much faster you are. You look like you were just having a cruise. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Dancing on the foot pegs. Yeah. Um, if, if you try and rush it, you just end up catching the camera. It may look easy, but Guy's steering input comes from him rapidly shifting his whole body weight from one foot peg to the other. He's hardly moving the handlebars at all. How long is my bike? How long is it? How long is it? One and a half metres, yeah, about one and a half metres. It was a Formula One cat, four metres. Let's be honest, if I didn't win that, I should have just gone home. Gone home, tail between the legs. All right, go back for a cup of tea. Yeah, I think so. Grand job. Thank you. I'm not a bad loser, but uh, I just need some time in my life. <laughs> well, we've won one, we've won one, we've won one. Come on. <laughs>